Okay, everyone, we're back with example three, <clears throat> which is really example seven from the textbook. And I do need to let you know that I do handle these differently than your textbook does. And so the way that I'm going to do it is going to be very different than what you would see in the textbook. My way is better. And in fact, the textbook actually does it this way later on. So let's take a look at what we've got here in terms of the example first and talk through that. We've got a woman named Jill Bell who has $90,000 to invest. She has chosen one relatively safe investment fund that has an annual yield of 10% and another riskier one that has a 15% annual yield. How much should she invest if she would like to earn $10,000 in one year from her investments? Now, some of you may be thinking at this point, well, gee, why doesn't she just invest everything in the 15% yield? Because that's better than the 10%. It is also riskier though, and so if she were to put everything in the 15%, there is a chance that she could lose all of it. So she's going to put some of it in the 10% uh, as kind of a safety cushion so that if things do go badly in the market, that she doesn't lose all of her money. And so the way that I like to approach these problems, folks, is with this mantra right here. She's going to put some of the money in this fund. She's going to put some of the money in that fund, and that together is going to be all of the money that she invested. So my saying is some of the money plus some of the money equals all the money. Now that's a very simple and easy way to approach these problems. Uh, there are two things that we need to keep in mind here. She is going to be investing money, and she is also be going to be getting money back. So we're actually going to have two equations here. One equation that is representing what she invested and another equation representing what she is getting in return. And so the equation that she invests, what we're going to look at is we don't know how much she's putting in the first investment. We don't know how much she's putting in the second investment. So we're just going to represent those with variables. Some money is going to go into the X account. Some money is going to go into the Y account <clears throat> and altogether, she is investing $90,000. So in terms of her return, one of these accounts is going to give her a 10% return. The other one is going to give her a 15% return. And so this is going to be a 10%. So as a decimal 0 0.10 is how much she's going to get back out of the X fund. 15%, so 0 0.15 is how much she's going to get back out of the Y fund. And altogether, she wants to get $10,000 back. Now, for me personally, folks, this is a bit premature in the course for us to be doing these sort of problems. <clears throat> I honestly don't know why they put it in sec chapter one, but I have to introduce it sometime, so I might as well do it now. And so that being said, folks, to solve this would be rather nasty. This would be pretty terrible to try and do by hand. So we are once again going to call on our pal Wolfram to be handling this for us. And so what I'm going to end up doing, folks, is I'm just going to take what we've got there. We have two equations, one representing what she invested. Again, sum of the money plus sum of the money equals all the 90000 bucks, And one for her, the return. So she's getting 10% back from one fund and 15% back from the other fund, which will be $10,000 altogether. And so the way that we're going to handle this in Wolfram is we're going to put in the X plus Y equals 90000 then we're going to use the word and because we want Wolfram to solve these equations simultaneously. Uh, let's see. So I just put in Wolfram exactly what I have here, x plus y equals 90,000. Then the word and, and then this other equation right here, we're going to hit it and we will see what Wolfram tells us. Wolfram is going to say x is 70,000 and y is 20,000. And again, in this course, folks, everything means something. So X is equal to 20,000. My bad, that's 70,000. And Y is equal to 20,000. You'll notice that these two together, 70,000 plus 20,000, makes 90,000, which is how much she invested in total. And what we've got for X, X was our 10% fund and Y was our 15% fund. So what we can say is she should invest 70,000 in the 10% 
fund and 20,000 in the 15% fund. Now, if this type of problem seems like a bit of a heavy lift at this point, folks, don't worry too much. We're actually not going to do many like this for quite some time, but it does come up in chapter one here, so I thought I would just go ahead and swing it out there. Uh, we will be doing quite a lot of these later, but I do hope that I have a means of making them somewhat easy for you. And so again, for Jill to get $10,000 back on her investments, $70,000 needs to go into the 10% fund and $20,000 into the 15% fund. <laughs>